I just got back from dropping the twin jet go-kart with Danny Duncan on the last road trip with the cordless Tesla, which was an unexpected nightmare. It was a fire. The jet go-kart that I built for Danny was pure insanity, and it's impossible for me to explain to you how crazy that thing was to drive, but he and Kiwan had a blast. Nah, this shit is crazy, though. Bro, that shit... <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm back at my place, and this time I'm gonna put three jet engines on a go-kart, which works out perfect because after using two jet engines for Danny's go-kart, I just so happen to have three left. And I learned a couple of things from the go-kart I built for Danny. One of them is that two jet engines on a go-kart is way too much power for rear brakes alone. That thing went so fast that it exceeded what the rear brakes were capable of in less than a block. So for this project, I'm using one of my shifter carts that has four wheel disc brakes. I wanna mention that I'm just getting back going on YouTube now. I got a couple of these go-kart videos, some engine videos, and then I'll be moving into crazier stuff. I'm just really backlogged right now. Don't forget to subscribe and watch this video to the end because I need some motivation. These projects are tough. Before I mount three jet engines on this go-kart, I'm gonna take it out and take it for a ride so you can get an idea for how fast it is. Then I'm gonna bring it back here and get to work. That's a lot of smoke. I think this gas is old. Sort of looks like used motor oil. Much better. I'm back here at the previous spot where I filmed all the other go-kart videos. I brought the shifter cart here to try it out and give you an idea for just how fast it is before I put the jet engines on it. And for almost all of these shots here, I'm gonna be using the Insta360 X3 camera. This is the one camera I get asked about the most. I use it for a lot of those GTA shots or POVs from the back where it looks like a stuck drone shot. And that camera is my go-to camera, especially for really violent situations like this. Since it is a 360 camera, you can take the video, put it into the Insta360 Studio, select your angle, your stabilization, or keyframing, or anything that you may want to do to get creative with that video. So that's the camera I'm gonna be using for most of this video here. And lucky for you, I put a link in the description where you'll get 10% off if you use my link. Let me get this go-kart started up, show you just how crazy it is. Cause this thing, it's pretty insane. You're gonna love it. If that's not a testament to how good these 360 cameras are, I don't know what is. I tell you that thing was wild. I don't know if the jet cart is gonna be faster than this. I guess we'll see. Let's get it back to my shop and mount the three jet engines on it. These are the three jet engines I'm using for the go-kart. Each one of these engines has about 100 pounds of thrust. So three of these combined, that's a pretty good thrust to weight ratio. I just have to mount this exhaust nozzle on this one engine here. And then get everything mounted on the go-kart.
Wow, it looks so naked now. It sort of kind of looks a little weak. Next thing I'm gonna do is clean it up and then complete my engine swap. There's not a lot of mounting points back here and this is gonna be a lot of force. So I'm just gonna clamp to the frame. I got the three jet engines mounted. I only have one problem left. I now have three jet engines on the go-kart, but I still only have one fuel tank. And these engines are gonna burn about 1.6 gallons per minute of fuel. So this one two gallon tank isn't gonna last long. The only thing I need now is some custom made fuel resistant fittings to tie the main tank into the external tank. And then I should be all done. I'm all done building the jet go-kart for real this time. I got the external tanks installed. I think they look really ugly, but I'm gonna need a lot of extra fuel since I have these extra engines. I do have an idea in mind that I'm excited about to build some custom external tanks. I'll show that in the next video. For now, this is how it's gonna have to stay. I think it's gonna be absolutely insane. Let's go take it for a first spin. I tried to take it for a test drive here, but not all the engines would start. There was a lot of fire, a lot of sputtering, no thrust. Something was wrong. I brought it back to my shop to check it out, and here's what I found. It turns out I have a fuel restriction where I go from one line through that little tiny filter into three. I don't know what I was thinking. I know how much fuel these jet engines burn, but it's okay. I'm just gonna 3D print a little fuel manifold, and I think this should do the trick. Looks good to me. Let's go. I'm back here at the location. I got the jet card unloaded. I'm ready to take it for a test drive. I'm a little bit nervous about the turn since I don't have that power going to the rear wheels. I won't be able to power out of turns like I normally do, but I do have plenty of thrust, so I think I'll be okay. I guess we'll see.
That was a wild, wild ride. <laughs> that takes some getting used to, but uh, it's fast. I don't think it accelerates from a stop as fast as a shifter cart, but man, that thing is fast. It pulls so hard. Once it reaches 20, it just starts accelerating like mad. I'm gonna fuel it up, take it for another ride, and try to push it a little bit harder this time. This thing feels really sketchy, but I wanna see if I could slingshot those corners a little faster to get a faster top speed in that straightaway. I got fuel all over my pants. I don't even know how that happened. Although this thing is a blast to drive, those curbs sticking out made me really nervous. So I couldn't go full send on this one. I didn't feel safe. It's just way too fast. The lack of control and the amount of power of that combination is really hard to explain to you how sketchy this thing feels to drive. I wanna see all the numbers in the next video. Unlike a traditional engine powered go-kart, or car for that matter, where you feel all of the power from a stop. With this, as you speed up, you feel more of a pull. Once you're over about 20 or 30 miles per hour, it starts pulling really hard. Once you get around 40, it starts pulling even harder. On those straightaways there, I didn't want to let up. I wanted to keep into it because around 45 or 50 miles per hour is where those engines started really singing and enjoying that air. But, uh, but I had to let off to make those turns. I almost didn't make a few of those, including that real sharp one at the end there. Most gas powered cars are exactly the opposite. You feel all of the power when you take off from a stop and less power as you speed up. But let me know in the comments below if you think that this looks faster than the shifter car just by watching the video. Just in case you missed it, I wanna remind you, I teamed up with Insta360, the masters of 360 video, to bring you a deal that's just as epic as the shots you'll capture with their cameras. I put a link in the description below that gives you a 10% discount when you purchase an Insta360 X3 camera. Other than that, thanks for watching. Tell me what you think, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Adios.